part one of our tutorial on QLab video. In this tutorial, we'll teach you the basics of importing video and how to get it into QLab, what are the best formats to use, how to size it properly, and some basic transitions and crossfades concepts. Today we're going to deal with QLab video. Uh, video queue is easy to drop in there. You either double click on this, you can trick and drag it in there like that and then you locate your video file you can either double click here drag it in from your desktop which is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna grab uh, one of these movies I have right here the best formats for video um, are photo JPEG H.264 or Apple ProRes uh, Apple ProRes uh, also is able to travel with an alpha channel which we'll talk about in a little while so you drop in your queue here I got mine right here the size really depends on the device you're going to be sending the video to. You want to do as little resizing as possible, um, if you can, um, to your device. So you want to make it the size of what you're going to be finally putting that to. It's not, not always easy to determine that because every venue is different. So I tend to pick sort of a 720i si default size and then uh, just kind of let the computer do that kind of work. I'm going to open the audition window which is sort of like a mini video screen so I can see what's going on and uh, so you guys can see it as well. And I'll put that just behind the right here on my desktop. So here's our queue. Um, we need to tell it where to go so you go to display and geometry and uh, we have several choices here. Um, Apple Pro 17 is to my main computer which is actually uh, just below me here and you wouldn't be able to see that so I'm going to send it to uh, to my projector, which um, we can set up what the what that size is going to be um, through the preferences here. So let's just have a quick look at the preferences and uh, under video and my projector. I'll hit edit, and I just know that my screen here is uh, is already uh, 1680 by 1050 and that is the size of uh, this main monitor so this is actually going to be fine for us. You can change this here um, and you can rename it whatever you like and uh, be good to go there. So let's have, go back and have a look. So here's the file here. You can see that the edges of it uh, are black which means it's not going to fill the full screen perfectly. So I'm just going to uncheck preserve aspect ratio which is going to let that thing fill up the whole thing. Um, it's going to play to the top layer. I think there are a thousand layers in QLab. Um, you know, if, if you're really just trying to have it play on top of the next one, you can keep it at a thou at, uh, at the thousand or top. And you can adjust the opacity if you want. It'll let the background come through. Again, I want it just at full, the full deal. Time and loops. Uh, I want it to play infinite loops. I want it just to be looping in the background. And uh, there is no audio associated with this file. If there was, you'd have full control over audio and um, trimming it, obviously, and uh, audio effects, and uh, interestingly enough, video effects, which we'll get to uh, in the second section of this tutorial. So let's have a look. So hit go, and it looks absolutely ginormous here. That's because I have the video scale set at 300%. So we'll just hit fit, which will drop it down to a normal size. And there you can see it doing its thing. It's a little crunchy here because I'm actually running a bunch of rendering right now for an After Effects project. So the poor computer is being a little stressed here. But there it is, and it's looking really good. So what can we do to this file itself? We can go in here, and right now I have it set to play full screen. So you can adjust the geometry here depending on what you want to do with it, hit custom geometry and uh, it already goes down to its default size. You can click on the image, you can move it around where you want it to be. You can uh, move your mouse to have it uh, get bigger and smaller depending on uh, what you're looking for. I just scaled it down quite a bit. I'm going to scale it back up. You can type in manually to what you want to do. If I just go one and uh, the tab key to go to the next one, one, you can have it be proportional or not proportional. Um, if we just lock that in so it's locked, it'll just stay at that size 
uh, be proportional on both sides there. Tab button will uh, get that going. And you resize it, put it where you want. You also have these cool new XYZ ones. So you can click on those and you can just move uh, around within those to sort of change the orientation um, to how you want them to be. You could have multiple cues play on top of each other. We'll drop in another video cue here. And uh, for this, the easiest thing to do really, I'll delete that. I'm just going to copy this one because it already has the right video surface and I'll just change the movie to a different movie. So we'll put in, um, in this one here and the name self assigns to that and we'll just move change the Z orientation slightly different and we'll move it over a little bit to the side now since they're triggered to both play on top if I fire this one now it'll show up on top of this one it's just by priority so the next one shows up right there um, this one is also set to loop and they will just go on their merry way just like that it's pretty amazing what you can do. Uh, one of the new cool things in here, um, you can adjust the playback rate, which is, uh, which is really kind of a neat thing to do. Uh, basically, I guess that's really done through pitch shift. So you can change that to say, let's go 0.25. Yeah, so I just cranked it way up and it's going crazy fast now. So that's really cool, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. You know, you could probably, I'm not sure if you can go slower. And you can, yep, you can go less than one, but I don't think you can go below, below that. So anyway, that gives you an idea of what you can do with that feature. Um, the nice thing about the audition window, again, is you can kind of see what would be on your, on your screens and everything. You can also add uh, titles to, uh, to your video. And uh, I'm just going to quickly kill this since we're stressing my poor computer with all the things I'm asking it to do. And to add a title, pretty easy. You just go to the video you want, you hit video effect, and you go in here under apply effects, and there's titles right here. And you can just type in um, whatever you want to have show up in here. And that's what will, will appear magically on the screen. and you can pick a font name. They, they, strangely, you're not allowed to select what you want it to be. Uh, you have to kind of know it, Helvetica, and that will, will help it uh, appear. So when you preview preview that guy, hit go. With a little luck, you will have uh, a title, and sure enough, there it is. It is married to the angle of that. Um, you can add additional effects to it um, if, if you want to make it look interesting and do all kinds of different things to it. Um, I do not think uh, you can have multiple effects on a single one of these things. Uh, you can change the blend mode and uh, the text color. Let's change this to something a little more fun. All right, well, that should get you started with video. Yeah.